Crunchyroll has released all the nominations for their Anime of the Year awards for the 2023 year, and we are here to kind of go through and look at them. If you've watched our previous video where I just went through the Anime Trending Awards, they go a little bit more in depth, I feel like, than Crunchyroll usually does in different categories and different nominations for things that probably won't end up getting any recognition here. So go check that out, I guess, if you kind of want to end up seeing that. Uh, if not, you're just here for Crunchyroll. We're going to end up being here for that. We're going to talk a little bit about some of these series. Uh, this might be a little bit easier because they only do six nominations per, so I can go into each of them and talk a little bit more about uh, how I felt maybe about each of them and the way that each of them were presented. Uh, and then we're going to end up moving on from there. 25 different categories, six per. We're going to go through like animation and all that stuff and then we're gonna hit like the genres and then all that and then we'll loop back to do anime of the year and that stuff at the end if you just want to see like a certain award or whatever i'm going to be thinking about like when it comes to a certain section uh there's timestamps in the description for each of them as we're kind of going through them and you're able to look at that i believe crunchyroll started a new thing last year for them where all shows aired in fall 2022 I believe it was, uh, got carried over into this year's awards due to the fact that they're trying to eliminate recency bias. So it's basically everything in this will be from fall 22 to summer and summer 23. Uh, I believe is kind of how they're doing it, uh, which I think is a little unfair because things like JJK and like Attack on Titan are going to be in here and neither of those like finished in its entirety and people are going to vote for like JJK based on the fact of the whole thing uh, as opposed to just core one of it, like the early half that aired before the cutoff date, which I think is like them kind of screwing up the way that they, they're presenting this, but it is what it is and we're just going to kind of roll with it and we'll see uh if you disagree with my opinions that's valid most people probably will just you know don't complain too much about it <laughs> and understand that it doesn't affect anything if i think differently on things uh but feel free to also let me know why you felt certain ways or why you disagree or agree with certain opinions that i have let me know also things that you would vote for how you feel about certain series just whatever you got and i'd be glad to kind of read them and have this kind of discussion with people and i think that'd be pretty pretty fun so hopefully you guys enjoy we're going to start off here with our first category of best in animation uh for me this is a easy one as this one unfortunately got carried over for the section but we are voting for chainsaw man from the character animation to the smoothness that they had of the overall cg animation with a lot of our fighting uh with denji specifically <laughs> involvement in it uh to just a lot of how grand some of the sequences felt and overall even the character animation like i said when it came to like showing the weight of him having to carry around this stuff uh, that he has with him I think just there's so much of it that was done so so well the attention to detail and so many different things a lot of beautiful beautiful backgrounds uh, and everything that we had just everything as a whole this whole production of the series was great uh, from start to finish and I'm i thrilled to have actually been able to have watched that on the series i wish my thoughts and opinions were a little bit more together when i actually did it for the reactions uh and i had some opinions and thoughts on things that i no longer felt by the back end of it but unfortunately was stating and stuff at the beginning that may have you know left a few people and all very unhappy about it but just know you know we come around the things you gotta give some people some time and things happen but i think that that's easily the best one here i think uh mappa being here for three of them is fucking insane to me <laughs> I get three of them uh but i mean all deserving looks out for being honest attack on titan they're saying special one i'm gonna count both of them but it doesn't really matter are both animated extremely extremely well uh you having one of the best sequences that they were mappa actually ended up having with the hanji scene uh especially in special one uh, having that in here i think is fantastic jdk if we want to put for the entirety of the whole second season sure if we just want to put the first core there's multiple episodes with specifically of the first arc i think that they did excellent on had done extremely well so of course deserving to be on here uh, of course, they're going to put what you Photable and Demon Slayer for the Swordsmith Village arc. Well, this was easily probably the worst, I would say, in terms of production overall that they had with Demon Slayer this thus far. Uh, it's still like far and beyond what a lot of people do within the industry. Uh, so we still have to kind of give credit and, and recognize them for those sort of things. Mob Psycho always knocks it out the park 100% with that. Um, and Trigon Stampede Studio orange just going above and beyond proving why they are easily still and probably will continue to be the best uh 3d studio so all things very very deserving of kind of being on here and honestly i don't know if there's too much that off the top of my head i can think and say should be on here in its place 
I don't actually know if there's anything I would say should be on here instead in its place. Uh, the only other things I can think of is like free run, but that'll be on it for next year. So <laughs> it's not supposed to be on for this one. So I don't have an issue with any of these kind of things being on here. Uh, I guess I'll give some predictions with this because I kind of wish I did that with the the anime trending one, but I didn't end up doing that. Um, I think JJK will win this award uh, or Chainsaw Man. One of those two will end up winning this. I mean, it could be Demon Slayer. I'm assuming realistically any of the top four here have a chance at winning this. Um, but I'm assuming JJK will probably be the one who ends up getting voted to win this, but I'm going with Chainsaw Man as my pick. Number two, we have best in character design. Uh, Oshinoko, phenomenal character design from every single character, from all the side characters to having characters like Frill and Minami and having just the eye matching hair color almost or just making them like stand out so much and also with the eyes themselves being so special and animated uh just all the characters as well having so unique and distinct looks i'm also a sucker as i've said many many other times before uh for series that actually change outfits of characters instead of just keeping them static and we're always wearing the same things that's why a lot of shows like chainsaw man or jjk or demon slayer or whatever just do uniforms right because it's easier to not have to draw them constantly wearing different things or doing whatever so i love to just kind of give a little bit more recognition to shows that properly go about changing things and you know making the characters look different and constantly like appealing within the outfits that they wear but also just giving them great designs with having unique like styles of hair or eyes or whatever about them uh that makes them so 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 unique i think chainsaw man does a good job with i think a lot of these shows actually did decent with character design chainsaw man specifically uh a lot of the characters are fantastic in there and even hell's paradise uh has some great great character design i would say uh trigon as well so four of them that i think are really good i think jjk and demon slayer are pretty Eh, with character design if we're being honest uh with demon slayer i think does a good job of like the enemies or like the hashiras or whatever but like a lot of the other ones that we just kind of know about are like effort i don't know they they just don't strike me as like they're very unique or different um and same thing with jjk i would say where like a lot of the characters that we were necessarily introduced to like first season are still here as well also that's i think another point to note is just like these being continuations of the series uh, giving them awards for things that they did already but you know they're not doing any different going into the new season so almost considering demon slayer with the character designs going into the third season being the exact same as the first except for the ones that were now just being introduced to there's not enough for me to want to properly give them an award for that uh and same thing with jjk whereas i think we changed them a little bit because we get introduced to some other ones and change them uh within the first arc itself i don't think that we do anything entirely different uh from the first season that makes me want to be like i'm picking that and we're going to end up going Oshinoko here. In terms of best director, I just am trying to take in, as I haven't read source materials and everything of all of these, the vision that they're trying to present and how unique or distinct it almost feels from the others uh, or just like from other things that I've seen and just like how clear all of that kind of comes to me. And I think that three of them stand out to me with that being Heavenly Delusion, Chainsaw Man, and Bochi the Rock. I think stand out very clearly to me of uh, how unique they kind of are. More so Bochi the Rock and Chainsaw Man, but Heavenly Delusion just as a whole and a whole like work is so excellent that I just feel like you still have to give them that and the appreciation of uh, the entire staff, not even just the director kind of involved with it. I think with Chainsaw Man taking like such a cinematic approach to the way that the, the story and everything's kind of unfolding in front of you in this format uh and changing it entirely from the manga to give you such a different unique experience and elevating the almost right like this is something where if you had the award of like best screenplay or best adapted screenplay it's like very unique in the style of it's so different where it's like not a one-to-one -one copy but it gives you the whole different experience and something that you almost necessarily can't get uh if you come directly from the manga which i think is such a tough thing to kind of do and then the same thing almost comes in here where our director of bochi the rock takes something of a a four panel manga and turning it into something so special because you have to add so much more to it uh and i think just the direction overall of like the concerts that we kind of had to play and use the use of so much different like almost real life imagery that they kind of had in the backgrounds and a lot of the different shots and stuff are so unique and special uh especially to this series it's things that you see a lot within like kyoto animation shows and stuff and being able to see that talent kind of displayed outwardly here to this and turning something like bochi the rock which typically isn't like a genre that can really 
pop off as much as something like Chainsaw Man and, or JJK and being like in this category specifically is such a special thing in my opinion uh, to actually even have the recognition and have it nominated that I'm going to have to end up going for and voting for it uh, in this spot. And now just to carry over absolutely everything that I just said, there's not going to be much more I really talk about with this when it comes to best cinematography, it goes to Chainsaw Man. And I think that it just, that's the style that i don't know is so different than everything else that's presented here everything is just seems to have so much care to it like a very slow process of them kind of going through and adapting this and making sure that everything is perfect down to like the last detail right taking time slowing things down showing you just like characters getting fucking dressed when it's happening right uh the use of lighting is so special for them the use of just shading and on different characters or just the shadows in certain situations and creating like these different environments and atmospheres and stuff, I think are certain things that were done so excellent within this series. Uh, I think heavenly delusion is another one that deserves a ton of recognition in this section. Um, but those two would probably be my one and two here. The unfortunate thing with a lot of these awards is you start noticing the constant theme of AOT, Demon Slayer, JJK, Chainsaw Man, every single one and it becomes a little tiring which is why i don't like necessarily love the crunchyroll stuff as much uh because it's you know sometimes that is the case right and we are going through like animation specific awards and stuff so it makes sense that a lot of them are going to kind of be appearing here uh but it's just I don't know. It gets a little tired at some point. Change things up a little bit when we go into best art direction. I'd like to give recognition to Zom 100 for this, as that's going to be what I end up going for and voting for. Um, I think the use of so many different things, the decisions to create aspect ratio differences throughout like flashback sequences or like other moments, the use of using different colors and the brightness of when you end up killing the different zombies involved, especially the explosion and bringing the gray world into like light and color through the uh, realization and stuff that Akira has throughout the first episode. There's just so much uniqueness that kind of goes into it uh, to bringing things to life, right? The choice of colors that are used within every single character and their designs and the clothing and the things that they're wearing, the choice of just everything that you kind of run into to kind of liven up this deadly world almost uh makes the series itself i feel like feel so special uh and just deserve some sort of recognition for that and i'm gonna end up going for it on that i think this is like the least likely one here <laughs> to actually get any recognition and win if i'm being honest but I'm going to vote for it because I, I really like it. Best Romance, our absolute favorite over here on the channel. We absolutely love romance. Uh, I'm not sure too much why Skip and Loafer's on here. It's not really that much of a romance, especially through the first season, but it is what it is. Uh, I finally get to see some different faces involved here, which I really, really like. Uh, I'm going to go Insomniac next after school on this. I think this is my favorite couple out of like all the romance ones that are involved. Uh, I love their chemistry that they have together. I love how they almost just love being together and how they can kind of find things and similarities with each other uh, and kind of want to start relying and always being with each other almost. I don't know. It's so cute. And it's such a excellent slice of life for them to kind of just throw in here that actually feels almost real, like real life people and uh, real life interactions. And it doesn't feel like it's like overly done for anime specific like purposes. I don't know. I think it's just excellently done and I, I absolutely fell in love with these two and just their story as we were kind of going through it. Uh, things like Orimiya, Missing Pieces, in terms of romance, not as much as season one because development's like non-existent because they cover that through the actual main series of it. Uh, so I don't really understand that being here. Uh, My Happy Marriage is really great and really cute and has a lot of good stuff, especially with the main two. And I really like them, but just doesn't edge it out for me over the other ones. And then the same thing almost just falls for like a lot of the other ones like Kimada with the Armin too in this one. I just like don't love them and their interactions and what's kind of shown as much as I do the others. And while I love our our duo here in Skip and Loafer probably even more than this one, it's just the actual romantic elements is far less than what's actually in Insomniacs. <laughs> So it just doesn't feel as right to kind of vote for it. Uh, I don't love our duo as much with Tomachan, so I don't care too much for them or to vote for that one personally. Uh, but Insomniacs, I think, is something that I'm very happy to see on here uh, and get some love and recognition. And honestly, this is probably what I would vote for and what I would want to see on here. So I'm not too, too angry about that. Uh, I'm assuming Hormio or My Love Story or Imata are going to probably be the two that people like the most and vote the most on here, though. Uh, but is what it is. When it comes to best comedy, 
we have a variety of different interesting ones. I have not seen Urusei Yatsura, so that will not even be in consideration for me. Uh, I watched three episodes of Mashal, did not like any of them, and felt that they were very unfunny. They just didn't, the style doesn't hit with me. It doesn't do anything for me. Uh, so that just won't be voted for me at all either. Uh, I think the other three or the other four here are very funny, uh, all different ways kind of, um, but just very, very good. Uh, Spy Family Core 2 just wasn't the same as Core 1 and having that feeling of knowing like how high almost it can peak in a way uh, and what the comedy and like all those levels can kind of be that I feel wasn't existent almost through the second core as much. Uh, it just makes it a little bit harder for me to want to vote for it, especially considering I think the other three are extremely strong. Uh, Zom 100, I think is incredibly funny. I haven't finished it yet. So to give the whole body of work a, a thing is a little bit more difficult, uh, but I think it is extremely funny. And I think that they do a excellent job of just their use of comedy and how they can kind of liven up this this deadly world uh buddy daddies is great while i don't necessarily think it's the most funny of the shows here it does have great comedy within it and i think just overall as a series is great and everybody should kind of give that a watch basically if you want to watch like spy family but that actually has like development and like good plot to it uh you can watch buddy daddies but our winner once again is going to be bochi the rock uh bochi the rock's fucking phenomenal uh so so much about it. it is so so excellent and deserves to just be on here especially there's emotional moments that are excellent to it there's real things in it that you'll kind of not notice or think about unless you actually like focus on them and try and think about them because the comedy is so good and you try and take it as such a lighthearted show uh and it's actually like somebody like bochi coming really out of her shell here and kind of being opened up and brought into the world by having such great friends and people around her it's phenomenal and i love it we move forward into best action oh fun what an award <laughs> We got to see a lot of our returning faces, a couple new ones, but Bleach Thousand Year Blood War and uh, One Piece in here. I, I don't watch the One Piece anime, I'll be honest, so I can't really vote for that. It's a little bit hard to do that just because I don't watch it. Uh, Bleach, I have not watched this core of it yet. I just haven't gotten around to it. So my opinions on that will kind of be non-existent. I have watched the other group of them. Uh, action sequence, they had like one really big one within uh attack on titan which was excellently done but it wasn't the primary focus of it especially only being an hour long it's a little bit unfair almost to judge it according to these ones that have entire long running series and sequences onto it uh we have demon slayer which like i said i thought was a little bit of a downgrade in comparison to the previous stuff that we've also had before while still being extremely high quality just not as much as maybe the other two are this is where we run into issues JJK is my vote here, right? Easily is my vote, especially with what season two is able to do. But notice how they say this is season two, but they don't decide to say season two and then put core two like next year or something, right? Which is what they should specify if they're doing that. So it almost seems like they're trying to tell you we're putting all the JJK in here and then we're not going to put it in next year at all. Which is just weird because then why did like in previous one spy family have to go into it? Like why couldn't we just step I don't know. But their their reasonings and the way they do things are a little off and weird to me, but it is what it is. Uh Chainsaw Man and JJK are easily my top two in this category uh i would say uh what i love so much about like the characters and just the story and like everything else that was in chainsaw man at least the first season uh that i think is significantly better than presented in jjk i think jjk's action sequences and everything throughout the second season and that that area was a lot better and more intriguing for me to kind of watch than than chainsaw man so best will end up getting my vote for that best fantasy ah yes our favorite when demon slayer wins best fantasy has it <laughs> As before, uh, like I said, didn't like Mashal, can't vote for that. Did not watch the Ranking of King one, so can't say that. And also did not watch Angel Maggot's Bride, so I can't also pick on that. So we got the other three that we have seen. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Hell's Paradise, while I think it does have like its fantasy elements and everything. Well, uh, I just didn't like the series as a whole, so it's a little bit harder for me to want to even vote for it for something. Uh, and while I don't view a lot of the aspects of Demon Slayer as fantasy, right, because that's not what you think of typically when you think of fantasy, uh, while I guess it is it's just not what i think of in a way uh so i'm just gonna go with mashoka tensei season two for this even though this is like the least like fantasy feeling part of the series so far but the best drama 
comes involved here. Uh, I did not get to finish to your eternity season two, so that will be involved in my decision making here. This is extremely hard. And I guarantee you, whatever one I pick here, I will regret picking and I will pick something else going forward uh, into the future. I'm not really considering AOT here. I got to be honest. I also just don't like the idea of a one hour episode because they're only considering special one here, even being considered for half of these awards. Like at that point, we should just consider all other movies. Like, I just don't think that's that's appropriate for it to even be nominated for these. Um, and then My Happy Marriage, which I just don't think is even in comparison to the other three the other three are excellent shows so phenomenal the drama in them as well so so excellent it's so hard for me to find what i love and pick and choose between all of them and and pull them out there's so much just want to show love to all of them but it's hard uh but i think just like going through the overall experience that like i kind of felt throughout watching these shows and the things that were presented and the ups and downs that i kind of had emotionally and the way i felt Vinland Saga is unfortunately going to be my vote, and I say unfortunately because I want to show love to all the other two, but these two series, the Oceanico and Heavenly Delusion, definitely deserve that consideration. The best slice of life series. Another genre that we go heavy into on the channel and just on my own personal time. Uh, I just find a lot of love and enjoyment out of these series. Uh, do it yourself. Had not been able to get around to watching it, so that one will not be consideration for me here. Horimiya will not be in consideration just because... It just doesn't deserve to be on here, in my opinion. Uh, the other four are excellent shows, though, and all kind of deserve to be here. Uh, my Love Story with Yamada, I think, is great. I don't necessarily love it as much, maybe, in terms of Slice of Life, but it does kind of capture that in a way uh, that I'm not necessarily mad at. Uh, and I think that actually it captures a unique side of it. Uh, with people meeting through different ways and having different experiences as a result of that. So I don't know. It's pretty cool uh, having that here. And I'm happy that we do get recognition for a lot of these shows that I have at least watched on the channel too. The other three with Bo Bochy the Rock, uh, Insomniacs, and Skip and Loafer, I think are all so, so excellent and all capture those little things that kind of just make you appreciate like certain moments and just life and you know the friendships that kind of get involved with meeting the other characters, the way that relationships are built, the way that people think and you know others are there in support of them and just go through the full experience of that all three of these shows have excellent jobs and go through all of them so 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 well uh i i just i don't know this one is another one i'm gonna flip between all of them because i think they all nail so many aspects but i i'd hate myself if i didn't give skip and low for any love here uh because this show warranted like 50 minute like episodes for me like videos so like they were like 40 minute like discussions for me just on different things that it made me like feel and want to talk about that i haven't really had on a lot of the other series that we've done uh and coming from something that you would almost think is so simplistic it just is interesting to me that i was able to like feel like i could pull so much out of it and it actually impacted me or like i felt a lot that much uh, that it should kind of be on here and i feel like i gotta give it some love uh, at some point there so we'll vote for it in terms of your best main character uh i don't like this award <laughs> at all i think that the nominations are kind of bad for this i think that there's significantly better ones that should have been chosen uh for different reasons but whatever once again Aaron even being nominated for an hour-long special Luffy being nominated for a show that has over a thousand episodes like it's just it's dumb to me like we gotta there's got to be a line where after a certain amount of episodes or time or whatever you can't have nominations in my opinion because it just doesn't make sense like they're given so much more time to develop and be things that other characters aren't here like somebody like Bochi and Denji who have had 12 episodes for you to get to know them whereas Aaron and Luffy have had however many right and same thing with even Mob and having three seasons at this point and even Thorfinn I guess you could say with having 50 episodes right but having so much time but more mom and thorfinn are a little bit different as each of them have like less episodes total than the other two do and also Aaron being like the single i don't know it's a little bit more difficult uh i like denji but you still got to see a lot more from him and i love bochi but it just she doesn't hit the same as i think thorfinn does on the experience and journey that we kind of go over with him as a character throughout this season uh and i think that deserves a lot of recognition there i'm assuming Aaron or Luffy are going to end up winning this, though, uh, which is a bit unfortunate for them to end up doing. Uh, in terms of supporting character, boy, am I happy to see fucking Kana on here. I am so thrilled to be able to see that. I actually like the nominations a lot more for supporting character than I do the others. Uh, and I actually really appreciate that Hanji's even on here, even though I still don't think that 
AO2 should have nominations for like any of this stuff. Uh, but I do appreciate that they nominated her as opposed to literally any other character, uh, which I think is great. And she deserves recognition at least in some sort of fashion. So I'm happy with that. Our two JJK folk in this one, Ghetto, I get, I get, and I honestly don't hate that at all that he's on here. And honestly, I'd expect him to probably be the winner or at least like highly up there in, in the running at least gojo i don't really understand the, the choice of him even being on here i also don't like the idea of two people from the same show getting the recognition here i feel like we shouldn't do that but i'm not in charge either with that uh power is great she's definitely fallen in a great supporting character for them to kind of have involved but she almost stops at that and doesn't really add too much to it whereas i think somebody like reagan or even kana uh each add like so much more to our main characters, to our development of our story, to just like all the other characters within the story outside of that, that I just think are like so necessary to kind of be here as well. I think Reagan just going like through and having like his conclusion to his arc here at the end is such like a special thing, but I have such a strong bias with Kana and my love for her that I have to pick her. <laughs> I have to vote for her here. So there's, there's just a bias vote, but we're going to end up going with it. Must protect at all costs. I'd also have Kana on this one too, but since we're not going to, like, why is, why? Like, it just doesn't make sense. It's like, are they voting for jokes? You know what I mean? That's fine if we want to do that, but why are all the other ones taken serious in certain ways when they shouldn't be, you know? It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, in terms of must protect, like, it has to be one of the kids, right? So one of these things, and it's Miri, like, it's not even a joke that she's easily the most must protect out of them. Anya can protect her fucking self, if we're being honest, and Bochi just needs friends and to come out of her shell. <laughs> So she can protect herself too. I haven't seen her. I can get kinks. So I can't go into it. I love Saleta, but also by the end of it, she's kind of protecting herself if we're being real the whole time too. So Miri's the only real answer here, if we're being honest. But I doubt she wins, but it easily should be. Anime song, our favorite one. My favorite one's River. I said this in the last video. For whatever reason, nobody's voting for it, and it's kind of pissing me off. Anyways, River is my favorite one, and it is not on here. I haven't heard Suzume. Uh, definitely not work. Kickback's great. Station Complex is great. Where our blue is, is good. Uh, so it's probably between these three. Idol's fantastic. It's going to be Kickback, though. Kickback's like one of the... Oh, it's so good, actually. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I expect this to win, or Idol. One of those two will probably end up winning here. Can't believe they don't nominate River, ever. That, that song's so good. It, it needs more, more love. Best score. Our favorite score. Oh, well, my favorite one's Finland Saga once again. <laughs> <laughs> no recognition there, so that's kind of lame. You know how I feel about a lot of these other ones kind of being involved? Like, this is movie budget, doesn't deserve to be on with normal shows, it's just unfair. Like, I'm just, I'm gonna stop repeating myself over and over again. Uh, Butch of the Rock's gonna end up winning this one. They also created so much original song to be within the, the anime itself. It's just, it deserves the best opening sequence. So, no longer just the song, but the actual sequence that kind of goes along with it. Well, doesn't actually matter because Kickback wins this one too. <laughs> The opening sequence say Chainsaw Bad, taking the inspiration from all the different movies and also just being so fucking excellently done deserves tons of recognition. I think Idol's great, but I don't think the sequence overall is as like amazing uh for it until we get like that in sequence with aqua the like and uh i kind of dancing. I think that is fantastic. Uh this, the Heavenly Delusion one's phenomenal too. Uh, mixed with the song and just the visuals of it, I think are great. This one's very fun with uh, Song of the Dead and the dancing and stuff. The only shame is it takes like nine episodes for the whole completion of it to kind of be present. Um, and the other two, I don't care to for that much. Uh, and we're going to just go and kick back again, though. I asked our favorite ending sequence songs. I don't like any of them. <laughs> I gotta think of, okay, I gotta, I gotta jog my memory of the, I'm just thinking of the songs. I gotta think of like the visuals. Hang on, what episode was this? Does it tell us? I don't know. I'm not looking this stuff up. Definitely not that. Actually, Ko has some really fun ending visuals. Not, not this one. I'm trying to remember this. This one was pretty, I remember. Oh, color had such fun them dancing and everything and then the shifts between the different ones yeah we're probably gonna it's probably chainsaw man 
strictly because of the visuals, which I can't even remember, but I just remember every single one was so fucking excellent. Uh, but just because I don't like any, like literally any of the ending songs for it, and I like Color as a song, and I just remember the sequence, and it's like the cutest thing ever, especially when Anya's like dancing at the table and everything, uh, which I think is great. We're going to go with this as our ending sequence vote. Next up is our best voice artist performance. Uh, I am going to only consider four of them as I don't want to keep saying it. Uh, Denji, I think he actually did a great job, especially as I think it was his introduction uh, as a voice actor in any sort of way. Uh, and I think that he was great for that. I think the voice actress for Bochi did an excellent, I mean, that scream, anybody hear that fucking scream that she did? That girl did insane at nailing her so much in her personality and bringing her to life, uh, which I absolutely thought was excellent. Uh, and I'm happy to see some recognition uh, <laughs> properly uh, for her here. And then this is where I don't get it. I talked about it in the last one too. It, it, was I missing something with Gojo's voice actor that happened that like he was like so excellent? Because I don't remember like a single sequence where I was like, this guy's nailing this role and he's standing out. Like I don't remember a single one. So like why everybody's so in love with like voting for him, I just don't understand. Uh, and picking him for these awards, I just don't get. I would easily have had Arnade from Vinland Saga on here. I think her voice actress was the easily the best of the last year for that one specific role, uh, if we're going to do that. I think for Anya here and her voice actress, she does a great job as Anya, but she does an even better job at every single character that she plays. So if we're picking overall, but no, because we're nominating them for a specific character and the things that they do, and although Anya's great, there's a point where certain characters, I think, nail other things better. I don't know. It's a little bit hard to do. And I wish that they just did overall and not just recognition for a single performance. Um, but I guess single performance is fine. I don't know. I don't necessarily love a lot of these nominations. I'm going to go with Bochi for this one and her voice actress. Uh, so congrats on that one. Although I believe Aaron's going to end up probably winning this one. I don't watch in dub, so I don't know. But why Sally Amaki's not on here for Carol and instead they nominate the Tomo one is fucking insane to me. I just, <laughs> I can't believe that, but all right. Next, we're going to go up with Best Anime Original. Uh, these, there's some really excellent ones. Buddy Daddy's is phenomenal. Akiba Made War is very, very fun. Mobile Suit Gundam Wish for Mercury is fucking great. I haven't seen the other three. Mobile Suit Gundam Wish for Mercury is going to be my vote here. I think overall as a series, it's better than the other two. Well, I think the other two are very excellent it's very close actually between all of them you should go watch all of them if you haven't watched any of them but i i'm gonna go with wish for mercury i'm expecting wish for mercury to probably win this but they're all excellent in terms of best film i haven't seen uh i've literally seen one of these but i love first case and never ends so we're gonna vote for it uh but i i haven't literally watched a single one of these at all i really do want to watch the blue giant movie just haven't gotten a chance to uh and i will watch suzume at some other point but just haven't gotten a chance to either these other two or other three are continuing of series that i just haven't seen so i'm unable to I'm assuming Suzume or Kage will end up winning this one. However, best new series, I'm assuming is recognition to the series overall. That's just the best out of all of these. This one's extremely hard. I think five of these, not counting Hell's Paradise, because I did not like that show, uh, is all excellent and deserves to kind of be on here. I think Oshinoko, Bochi the Rock, and Heavenly Delusion all stand out as ones that definitely deserve to be here. And I'm struggling to kind of pick between them. Uh, and figuring out exactly which ones I would like to go with. I think I have to go with Bochi the Rock. I don't know. It's so special to me with what they're able to accomplish and how they're able to bring that to life. And I didn't think I would ever get a music anime that I loved like as much as K-On. And while I still think like K-On's superior just because of the second season uh, being so fucking excellent, uh, it's just, this is so, so good. And it makes me want so much more. That it just, oh, I don't know. I gotta vote for it. I'm assuming Chainsaw Man or like Hell's Paradise on the one in that though. Uh, when we do best continuing series, this, I like this as a, a nomination in general. I like we're gonna continue onwards with this. Uh, this is Vinland Saga easily. I think Vinland Saga is far and away the best thing here. Uh, I think just. There's not much I really want to go into any of these. This is easily just the best thing here. Finally, we get our final award with our anime of the year. I'm happy to see a lot of these nominations on here. I think a majority of these are excellent. Oshinoko is so fucking good. It's literally one of my favorite mangas when I started reading it a few years ago. But my favorite portions of the series come in the second season. So I feel a little off thinking that the first part was better <laughs> and voting for it now. Uh, Chainsaw Man, I think, was 
probably one of the best first 12 episode introductions of like a shonen series I've seen in fucking ever uh which is a great thing to really have uh while i think like other shows like demon slayer and jjk were really really excellent for their first seasons i think their second half of them is what really elevated them to be special uh whereas i think chainsaw man's was the first 12 episodes were actually just really excellent to begin with uh vinland saga fucking incredible of a series as i already said uh jjk season two i didn't love it as much as everybody else really ended up doing uh and i have some issues with it i also just don't love it nearly as much as like chainsaw man or oshinoko or literally most of the other things on here while i still think it's excellent it deserves to be recognized and put on here uh and i do think it's going to end up winning I think like I just personally wouldn't end up voting for it. and Demon Slayer. I think this is by far the worst arc that they've ended up animating, which I've read the manga and I did not remember it being as bad as I felt it was in animation. Uh, so it's a little sad to kind of see that. I think the pacing of it was just incredibly off uh, and felt very poor, which was kind of sad to see, uh, which, yeah, so that won't be getting it. So we basically come down to a couple of these, which I think were great boy, how do I want to do this? And it's going to end up being Vinland Saga season two as my anime of the year. This is one of six or seven shows that I've ever given a 10 out of 10 to, uh, specifically the second season, I think is so excellent. It's right up my alley of the type of thing I'd like, tearing characters down, rebuilding them to a certain point, allowing them to find their purposes and allowing them to kind of explore the greater things out there, creating a place for themselves and so many others. Uh, within the world and having to go through that and then also carrying the things that you've kind of done in the past and learning to either carry them or let them go and moving forward uh, and just like so much I think is so fucking excellent on top of all the emotions and the different things that get kind of presented here uh, to carve kind of the path and all these experiences within Thorfinn as our main character throughout it it did a lot on me uh personally and just emotionally and i think it's something that absolutely everybody ever should have to go through and sit down and <laughs> watch because <laughs> it's so fucking excellent that's gonna be my vote for that hopefully you guys liked that's all i'm gonna really have there uh i think this year was a little bit like bad it's just like i have issues with the constantly let's keep using you know the same shows that have hundred and something episodes already one piece being involved i have issues with movies being nominated with other things when they shouldn't be because they have higher budgets and stuff i have issues when things like aot get nominated for things when they only have one hour of a special of course it's going to be better than a, maybe a 12 episode series because they can focus a lot more on it right like it just doesn't make sense to me why they're even nominated in these certain things uh i don't have an issue with any of the characters necessarily it's just things that get nominated in it and it all feels way too mainstream which i guess makes sense because that's crunchyroll and that's why we do the anime trending to give recognition to a lot of the other series on there but it just makes me wonder like the people who actually get involved and kind of are on like the committee in a way to vote for these things like what they watch like if we could go through and find out that they watch more than seven shows and they're not all you know like your typical mainstream shonen things because it almost feels like that's entirely all that they're doing uh which is a little bit sad i am happy to see a lot of the recognition for like heavenly delusion and oshinoko and stuff and things that aren't actually on the crunchyroll platform that get nominated uh which i think is great and i'm actually very happy is on here but yeah i mean hit or miss for what they were able to kind of present and do but those are just gonna be my thoughts and opinions leave yours down below let me know what you agreed or disagreed with when it came to me what things would you have a voted for or would you go vote for them for yourself i'm gonna leave the link in the description if you kind of want to go do that still uh and yeah just let me know i'd be interested to see kind of how people feel about things and i just enjoy that general interaction and stuff between people let me know also if you like these sort of videos and these sort of things where i just kind of talk about them uh and we have these sort of conversations i feel like these things will be a lot more fun like if i stream them or something uh in a way that like people could actively be here and like we could like one-on-one -on -one, like start talking as i make a point or saying things people can kind of answer back to i feel like would be a lot more entertaining but at the end of the day this is what we're gonna do and i don't know if you like these sort of things though instead of just the typical reaction stuff let me know if not that's fine i'm just gonna probably do one or two of these each year we just won't end up doing more it doesn't matter <laughs> so it's not a big deal uh yeah let me know if you liked it all the like and subscribe to me a lot to me feel free to check out the videos and channel if it comes with this episode or series recommend other things too you want me to watch as the upcoming seasons are going to start happening and stuff older shows you might want to see me watch as the winter season's not that stacked for me to watch things and we're going to catch up on things pretty soon here so we'll be able to open up some slots and find some things hopefully to watch uh yeah you guys have a good one though peace